All right, and now I want to uh, see share screen. I want to share screen two. All right, can you uh, see my PowerPoint? Yep. All righty. So uh, Acts 25 and 20. This is a real interesting chapter, guys. I really enjoyed this a lot because uh, uh, it's we're going to see the cult cr clash of cultures here, not in a bad way, but we're going to see the Jewish and the Roman culture uh, kind of tap dancing here in this hearing for Paul. And it's, it's turned out to be pretty interesting. I, I was kind of fascinated by it when I did it. I'm always blessing and preparing these things. So, uh, Monica, do you mind reading that slide? No. Acts 25, 1 through 4. Now when Festus had come to the province, after three days he went up from Caesarea. How do you say it again? Caesarea. Caesarea. Yeah. To Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul, and they petitioned him asking a favor against him that he would summon him to Jerusalem while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, that he himself was going there shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it interesting? Uh, I'm going to talk, I put the R next to Festus's name. Uh, hello, Clement. Thank you for joining us. Clement is, uh, I believe, from Kenya, right? Is that correct, Clement? Clement, you're on. You're uh, muted right now. Y yes, sir. Okay, and he's been uh, uh, WhatsApping me, and he's been wanting. So I said it's it, three in the morning there. I think so. You're faithful for for staying here. So uh, this is our Bible study on the Book of Acts, and we're in uh, chapter 25, 26. So the R next to Festus's name means he he's Roman. And I'm going to put a J next to the Jewish people because we're going to see this interaction. Okay, remember, it's been two years. Felix was the last uh, uh, procurator, or procurus Felix, and uh, he wanted Pride to bribe him. And when Pro Paul didn't bribe him, he just left him in prison, wanting again to do the Jewish people a favor. And apparently I read that the Jewish people did not like Felix, so they went to Rome and complained. And so he's replaced by uh, Festus, and, and there's a coin there. Those are actual coins for Festus as well, pictures of coins. He's a real person, and uh, he's the was a pro, uh, Porcius or procreator uh, for the Judean province between 60 to 61 AD. Uh, time frame, the consul of Jerusalem, if you remember when they were saying about do they need to obey the law, was 50 to 51. So it's been 10 years. Paul has done his three trips. So Festus comes, and after three days in Caesarea, he goes up. Remember, we're talking elevation. He goes up to Jerusalem. And again, it's been two years, but immediately the high priest and the chief people, the Jewish people, come to him, and they want to get at Paul. Isn't that amazing? And they're not going to let this thing lie down, are they? So, you know, two years later, they, you know, because Fest uh, Felix didn't give him to him. And so they're petitioning him. Again, it's a formal thing. We're asking formally that you give us to us. And they're asking for a favor. We're going to see this word favor here a few times. Felix wanted to do a favor, so he left Paul incarcerated. So, uh, so they ask him, why don't you bring Paul down here and we'll judge him. And again, but they wanted to kill him. They wanted to lay an ambush and kill him. That was their plan. Uh, but Festus, again, the Roman Festus answered and said, Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself was going there shortly. He, he's upholding what we're saying is the Roman law, and he's going to he, expand upon this later. Any questions or comments on that? Mm -hmm. All right. Melanie, you mind reading this slide? Sure, I'll read. Therefore, he said, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. And when he had remained among them more than 10 days, he went down to Caesarea. And the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Paul to be brought. When he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem 
stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended in anything at all. Okay, so he's going to go back to Caesarea, and he said, let those in authority, you bring your case. He's upholding the Roman law here. Okay, and I, I'm going to mention this later. We're living under Pax Romana at this time. Roman law that brought an interesting peace to the world that really allowed the gospel to go forth. And so uh, people have a right. So you come down, you accuse him, and we will see if there's any fault in this man. And so after about 10 days, he goes up there. The very next day, they're there, ready. They're, they're ready to plead their case. And uh, it said when they, they came, they laid many. And remember, Luke doesn't use words loosely, many serious complaints. I, yeah. you know, when Luke says it, I believe it's more than two or three, right? Serious complaints against Paul, which, again, they could not prove. Remember when Jesus was tried, they really couldn't prove that, you know, he said he was going to tear down the temple before two years ago, he met with them. They couldn't prove. Paul said, if the people who said I stirred up trouble in the temple, if I really did that, why are they not here testifying? And so he says, I neither did anything against the law, the Jewish law, or against the temple, nor against Caesar, Caesar, right? And I have a note there, uh, Le sta se moi. Anyone know what that means? Famous quote of Louis the Fourteenth. It means the the state. I am the state, right? So he's when he's saying I didn't do anything against Caesar. What he's saying is I didn't do anything against the Roman Empire. You know, uh, if you live in England, if you commit a crime, you're charged a crime against the crown, right? And it's the crown, meaning. Elizabeth, the crown charges you, meaning you've committed a crime. And we kind of do that here too. Years ago, there was a football player uh, physically abused his wife and he was arrested and she refused to press charges. But the state of Texas said, no, the state of Texas is charging you or whatever. So he's saying, I didn't break the Jewish law. I didn't do anything bad to the temple, apparently the brother, and I have done nothing wrong against Caesar. So again, if you, if you insulted Caesar, you broke the Roman law. All right. Uh, Clement, would you like, can you see this slide? Would you like to read it? You're, you're muted. Would you like to read the slide? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you well. But first, there's some one thing to do that uh, do the Jews a favor answered Paul and and said, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be checked before me concerning these things? So Paul said, I stand at I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, mm -hmm. where I ought to be charged. The, the Jews have, have, done no, have done no wrong, as you very well know, for I am an, an offender and anything is something of death. I do, not, I do not object to dying, but if there is nothing in these things of which this man accused me, no one can deliver me to, the, to them. I appeal to Caesar, then faced as when he had conferred with the council, answered, we have appealed to, have you appealed to Caesar? To Caesar you shall, you shall go. Okay, thank you, Clement. Okay, so again, here's Festus, he's hearing this, and we're going to see later, he doesn't really understand their charges. And he there's nothing that they can prove on him, but he wants to do the Jewish people a favor. Again, here's an occupying force. And it's like, uh, can we get along or whatever? So, hey, would you be willing to go to Jerusalem? Well, we know what the plan is if he goes to Jerusalem. But Paul appeals here and said, I'm standing here at, you stand in Caesar's place. You represent Caesar's, and that's where I should be judged. 
uh, I've done nothing wrong to the Jews. I've done nothing of death. So I, I will stand before Caesar. And so Festus agrees, said you have conferred, you know, it said he conferred with the council. Now, I'm not sure what Luke's word he is here. This is not Sanhedrin, which he used before. So this is apparently a Roman consul, people from his area, not necessarily the Jewish people answered. You've appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you will go. Uh, we'll come back to that thought in a minute. Okay. And we get back to Monica. Do you mind reading? No. Okay. Acts 25, 13 through 15. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. When they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a certain man left, a prisoner by Felix, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem asking for a judgment against him. Mm -hmm. So again, here I have another coin at the bottom. King Agrippa is a real person. Here's a coin minted to him. His, his name is actually Harold Agrippa II. He's the grandson of Herod the Great, who killed all the babies in Bethlehem, remember, who, who actually redid the temple. Uh, he's actually the last leader of the Agrippa dynasty. He would actually be uh, overthrown by the Jewish people in 66 BC. Again, we know uh, this trial is taking place between 60 and 61 AD. I'm sorry, I put BC, that's wrong. It's AD uh, because of the reign of uh, Felix, okay, or Festus, okay. So he comes and he's Jewish. Notice I have the J by his name. And Bernice, we're going to meet later, is actually his sister, and I'll talk about her in a minute. So they've come to meet the new Roman governor to greet him. And apparently this is a kind of a, again, trying to co cooperate together and work together. And so he's been there a few days, and, and it says, and Festus, the Roman, lays Paul's case before him and said, you know, there's this guy, they left a prisoner by my predecessor, and, and, and the chief priests and the elders, they, they want to judge him. And, you know, and I don't really know what to do with him. So he's going to appeal to Agrippa. Can you help me here? Because I don't understand totally what's going on. So here's the two cultures. We have Agrippa and Bernice Jewish talking to Festus, the Roman, who doesn't understand. If you remember last week, Felix's wife was a woman named Drusilla. She's actually the sister of these two guys, of Agrippa and Bernice. So he knew more of the law than Festus does. Festus doesn't understand the Jewish laws we're going to see here. All right, Melanie, you want to read? So she was a sister, a small world, huh? It is a small world, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, to them, I answered. It is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction before the accused meets the accusers face to face and has opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Therefore, when they had come together without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation against him of such things as I supposed. Yeah. So again, he, he's telling uh, the Roman pure creator here, procreator here, is telling the Jewish king, it's not our custom. Again, this is Roman law, okay? The Romans had, they wrote a, they had a canon of laws that ruled the world. And uh, this was a good thing. In other words, a Roman citizen couldn't be just delivered or be killed. If you remember when Nebuchadnezzar got mad at people, he just had them killed. Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein got mad at people, he had them killed. When Stalin, Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union got mad at people, he had them killed. Well, the Romans lived by a system of laws. He said, it's not our law or custom to deliver a man to destruction before he can face his accusers face to face. Well, this is kind of the basis of our law, right? We have adopted this, right? If you're arrested... In the United States, uh, I know Monica and Melanie know this, Clem, you may know this too. If you're arrested in the United States, you have a right to a trial and you have the right to 
face your accusers face to face. Rarely will they let testimony be via video. It's usually you're sitting in the courtroom and if someone says, I saw Mark Schumacher, you know, steal a car. I'm able to say, you know, that is not true. I wasn't even in the, the country when that car was stolen. So this is the basis for our law. And this is going to be work out to Paul's advantage. Again, this was a very good thing for the gospel in the days that there were rules and regulations and a peace that we live by. And so he says that they came, they wanted me to send them to Jerusalem. I said, no. And then they began to accuse them. And I'm listening to these things. And I have no idea what they're talking about. Remember Pontius Pilate did the same thing with Jesus. He didn't understand what was going, what do you, what do you mean? I don't, Pontius Pilate said, I don't see anything that this guy did deserving death, but he was bullied by the crowd into sacrificing Jesus, if you remember. But here's Festus saying, I don't know anything he's done. Uh, Clement, do you mind reading this slide? And just read the black. Okay, don't read the red. But, but had some questions against him about their own religion and about certain, uh, a certain Jesus who had died, who Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain, uncertain of, of, of such questions, I asked whether he was willing to go to, Je to Jerusalem and there be charged concerning these mothers. But when Paul appealed to be, to be reserved for, for the decision of, 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 of Augustus, I, com I commanded him to be kept until I could send him to Caesar. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I had some questions about him, and he goes, I, I'm uncertain. Here he's saying, I don't know what they're talking about. So I said, do you want to go down there and be judged? And he said, no, I appeal to Caesar. And by the way, he's, uh, the Caesar he's talking about is Nero, Claudius, Caesar, Augustus, Germanicus, right? We know Caesar, what was the rumor about Caesar or uh, Nero? He's the one that supposedly burned down Rome, right? Yeah. Fiddled where they burned Rome. Yeah, and, and uh, historians don't necessarily agree that's true. Some people thought he <laughs> might have wanted to burn a section, get rid of it so he could build a palace or something or whatever. Anyway, you can see he reigns from 50, uh, 54 AD to 68, so he's in this time frame and all put together. By the way, Paul's plea would have been there, Civis Romana Sum, I am a Roman citizen, okay? That would have been the plea. If you say, I am a Roman citizen, you had to be answered under law by the Roman thing. So again, Caesar, this is a real person. The Bible is not a book about a long time ago, far away places, real people. Go ahead, Melanie. I was just gonna say, I think it's interesting, the rain, 13th of October. Uh-huh. To, to June 9th. Yes. I thought that interesting, the dates, you know, we don't, we don't think way back then they had dates, but they, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it is true. And most people were saying, again, we said on uh, Felix 60 to 61 AD, because he wasn't as important with Caesar, with Caesar, uh, Nero, Claudius Caesar, more important, we have other historical events tied to him, right? Right. So, you know, so we can see he actually has these dates. And, and uh, interesting, I, I don't know about those dates because there's a time when, and Monica may be aware of this because I shared it before, we lost 11 days because of the change over the calendar. So we went from like the 4th of October to the 15th of October. I don't remember exactly. So sometimes if you talk about George Washington, is it his 15th of October or our 15th of October or whatever? Yeah, but it is real interesting, real people, because he was the, he was the world leader, right? He was the, the uh, you know, Joe Biden of his day or Vladimir Putin of his day. Everyone, you know, they know exactly when he reigned, his, his death is tied. Real people, real, et cetera. Okay. Uh, all righty. I think I'm back to you, Monica. Okay. Acts 25, 22 through 23. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. 
So the next day when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city, at Festus's command, Paul was brought in. Okay, so he's asking Agrippa this, and I would like to hear this guy. Now, we're going to see, Agrippa's not ignorant of this, and Paul's going to play on that, okay? I would like to hear him, so Festus says tomorrow. So the next day, uh, Agrippa and his sister, again, they're the sister of Drusella, right? Come in with great pomp and circumstance. Dun, 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 dun. Uh -huh. And then Paul, and then Festus begin, commands that Paul be brought in before them to speak. All right, Clement, do you mind reading again? And, and Festus said, King Agrippa, all these men who are here present with us, you see this man uh, about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petition, uh, petitioned me, both at Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live, but to, to live any longer. But when when I found that he had committed nothing deserving to deserving of death, uh, and uh, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. Mm -hmm. So again, he's explaining again, here are these people here said, Paul is, does this man is deserving a death? I can find nothing saying he's deserving a death. So I sent him to Caesar. I reference Acts 23, 11. Did, did he really send him to Caesar? Well, he did, but who sent him to Caesar really? God, right? Yeah. Remember, he said, Paul, be of good cheer. As you share to me, as you've shared to me and testified to me in Jerusalem, you're going to testify to me in Rome. And so God has promised Paul he would go to Rome. Augustus is just rubber stamping it, right? If you remember, Jesus told Pilate, you have nothing in your, you know, Pilate said, you're not going to talk to me. I can have you killed or I can have you alive. And Jesus said, you have not, you have no power in your hand, only what's given to you from God above. So, so here is how God gets him to uh, Rome, right? Again, we said it's kind of funny. God said, be of good cheer. You're going to go to Rome. Paul says, all right. He doesn't know he's going to go to jail, right? To end up sitting in jail for two years with a lot of freedom, of course. But this is how the God is going to send him to Rome through the Roman government, through Pax Romana. This is why it's kind of important to know these things. All right, here we go. We're back to you, Monica. Okay. <laughs> Acts 20, is it my turn? Okay. Yeah. Acts 25, 26 through 27. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord concerning him. Therefore, I have brought him out before you and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the examination has taken place, I may have something to write, for it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him. Okay, so kind of read between the lines. Again, we're getting, this is such a powerful history tool here too. I mean, I, I really believe any serious student of world history should be required to read and study this book because here we have we last week we had a court hearing with just Felix here we have a court hearing with Festus and now we're going to have another court hearing with uh, with Agrippa you know but here's Festus again saying I have nothing I don't know what to write I'm uncertain I don't know what to write so I'm glad it's I'm glad you're here especially before you so you can give me something to write because Caesar's gonna I'm gonna add uh give my own interpretation. Caesar will think I'm an idiot if I send him without any specific charge. If, you know, Caesar's going to get this paper saying, I sent this guy to you to judge. And it's like, well, what did he do? I don't know what he did and stuff like that. So could you kind of, I'm reading between the lines and, I, you know, again, you be Bereans, but in this kind of interesting, the banter between the Hebrew culture and the Roman culture here, different languages, different religions etc and here god's brought them together and here they're trying to work this out and questions or comments on that i just found this fascinating yep. all right melanie back to you 
Then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused of by the Jews, especially because you are ex expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. Again, Paul Agrippa says, you know, I'm going to hear him. And Paul says, I'm happy to talk to you, Agrippa, because notice he says, you're an expert. You know the Jewish law. You are an expert in the, in the customs and any kind of, I wrote in your notes, issues or in verses, any questions having to do with the Jewish people. You will understand what I'm talking about. So I beg you to hear me patiently. Okay. <laughs> All right, Clement, we're back to you. My manner of life from my youth, which was uh, spent from, from the beginning among my own nation of Jerus at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They know me from the, uh, from the first, if they were willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our, our religion, I lived, I lived a, a Pharisee. And now I, I stand and I'm charged for the hope of the promise made by God to our, to our fathers. To this promise, our 12 tribes honestly serving God day and night hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I'm accused by the Jews. Why should it be uh, thought incredible by you that God raises the, the, the dead? Uh huh. There you go. So he's again, Agrippa. Agrippa, the Jewish people know me. I was raised in Jerusalem. I'm from Tarsus originally, remember, but I was raised in Jerusalem. I was a Pharisee of Pharisees, he would say later in one of his epistles, Paul. You know, I lived this strict thing, and uh, now I'm now I'm being judged because I believe in the promises that our fathers believed in. And uh, why would you think it would be, why would people think it, it would be incredible that God raises from the dead? Remember, this is what he said the last time before Felix, that my hope is in the resurrection. He, he split the first council in Jerusalem, remember, because some of the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. So he said, I'm being judged because I believe God raises the dead, and they ended up fighting and couldn't deal with them. And he ended up being saved by the uh, Roman centurion and sent up to Caesarea, which saved his life. But here again, he goes, I am talking about God raising up the dead. And now he's going to give us a incredible gospel lesson here. But first, he's going to give us a, a testimony about himself. Uh, Monica, back to you. Okay. Um, Acts 26, 9 through 11. Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison have received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blasphemy, and began exceedingly enraged against them. I persecuted them even to foreign cities. Mm -hmm. And so he's giving his testimony. I did many things contrary to the name of Jesus. Uh, I did in Jerusalem. I put people in prison. Uh, when they were voted to put to death, I cast my vote against them. I sat in judgment of people and I, you know, voted that they would be died. I punished them in synagogues. I compelled them to blaspheme against the faith. Uh, I was furious with them and I even went into a Foreign, foreign cities to even chase these. This is who I was, uh, King Agrippa. But now I'm telling you, my life has changed. So he's giving his testimony here. All right, Melanie, back to you. Okay. While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, Along the road, I saw a light from heaven. 
brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen down to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goids. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So he, again, he's continuing his testimony. I was a persecutor of the church and he received paper. So he's telling, hey, Bruce, he's he, sharing his story. I'm on the road to Damascus. And, and guys, the road to Damascus is going to be on your final, okay? This is an important epoch in the Christian history, okay? And so uh, a great light comes and uh, he's knocked off his horse. And again, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Again, this is all Acts 9, uh, and he reiterated in 22, 9 through 10. But Acts 9, his conversion, and he said, Who are you, my Lord? And it said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. So he's giving Paul his testimony. Remember, Agrippa is Jewish. So to the Jewish people, what is the witness to the Jewish people? Jesus is the Messiah, right? Paul's witness to the Gentile people is there is a God, the true God in heaven, and we all need to turn and repent and believe in him. To the Jewish people, he was always involved in proving that G Jesus was the Messiah. So he's telling him, I met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Uh, Bruce, you want to read? Um, I'm not seeing your... Oh, never mind. I see it. <laughs> But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Again, he kind of shares a, a little bit more information than the original count acts and when he tells the apostles. But again, the Lord spoke to him, get up off your feet. And if you remember, he was blind, had to be actually led into Damascus. And uh, I have appeared to you, this purpose of why I've appeared to you is I'm going to make you a minister and a witness of the things which you've seen so far, and which I'm going to reveal to you. Uh, I will deliver you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles. Well, he's already delivered him from the Jewish people, right? Putting him in the hand of the Gentiles to whom I send you to open their eyes. Remember, uh, G Paul would write later that if our gospel is hid, it's hidden from those who are blind, who've been blinded by the, the God of this age, right? And to turn from darkness, okay? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand that you may receive forgiveness of sin and the inheritance. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So again, he, he's giving his testimony, but he's witnessing to Agrippa, right? And everyone in the room. Clement, you want I muted. You want to unmute, Clement? You want to read this slide? Yes. Therefore, King Agrippa, Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and Jerusalem and throughout, throughout the, 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 the region of Judea and, to, and then to the Gentiles and that they should repent and turn to God and do works befitting the repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the in the temple and, and try to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things other than those which the prophets and, and the Moses said could come, that, 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 that the Christ could suffer and he could, he could be the first raise from the dead and he could proclaim right to with the Jewish people and with the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. 
So again, testimony and uh, Bruce, you joined us a little late. I in these two chapters, it's really kind of contrasting the Hebrew culture and the Roman culture. What we've come to this point is that he's talked to Felix or Festus, who was uh, Felix's replacement, and Festus kind of throws up his hand and says, I don't know what the charges are. He's asked me to go to Caesar. I've commanded him to go to Caesar, but he's asked King Agrippa, can you talk to this guy and tell me what I should write to Caesar? What is he charged with? I don't even know what he's charged with. Uh, you know, how do I write... Uh, tell Caesar, I'm sending this guy to you to be judged, but I don't know what he's done. So Agrippa told Festus, uh, who's Jewish, Agrippa, who's Jewish, told Festus, who's Roman, I'll hear him and get back to you. So he's been giving him his testimony, and he's talked about, his, you know, I was a persecutor of the church. I got zapped by God on the road to Damascus, and he told me what I'd do, and I'm not disobedient to that so i started first in damascus you know declaring it remember he had to leave damascus because unbelieving jewish people wanted to kill him went down to jerusalem started sharing the gospel there unbelieving jewish wanted to kill him so they sent him off to tarsus and uh then he goes off to the gentiles again the gospel message to the jewish people is jesus is the messiah the gospel message to the gentiles he's saying here is one repent turn to God, and do works befitting of repentance, right? That's the gospel, man. And they all happen to one. If we repent and turn to God, we will do works worthy of repentance, right? That's what, that's what James says. Show me your faith without works. You know, we don't work our way to heaven, but if I'm following God, my life changes, my attitude changes, and I think the works figure it. So he's always has this two-theme gospel. I like this. And again, for this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. What happened is they said he's the guy who's stirring up the faith, and he brought Gentile. They suppose, remember that word, suppose? Uh, suppose is a bad word in Christianity, guys. Supposing will get you in trouble, right? We, we use the other term, assume. I won't go into yeah. that little analogy. But supposing, they suppose he had brought aristocus into the temple he hadn't you know they suppose this uh felix said i suppose they would say this about him they didn't do that and so they suppose he had done these things and we got to be careful that you know proverbs tells us a fool judges a matter before he hears it out and believe me i've been proved a fool many times because my wife starts to tell me something and i come up with an opinion and make a judgment before she's finished the whole matter, right? And she has to say, that's not what I'm talking about. I have to do that. So I realize that I'm in. <laughs> so, uh, so therefore, having obtained help from God, I stand this way, both witnessing to the small and great memory to call. I'm going to send you the people. I'm going to send you before kings. Here he is before another king, right? He's been before these governors. He's going to end up in Rome instead of saying no other things than which the prophets and Moses said would come. I circle prophets and Moses because what's another word for prophets and Moses? The law. Old Testament, right? The prophets okay. and the, the, the right, mo, the, the law, the prophets and the writings. And most of the time in the New Testament, they call the prophets and the law, right? Exactly. Moses is the law and the prophets. He's saying, I'm not saying anything that's not in from Genesis to Malachi. There, there's nothing in there. And, and we Christians know that, yeah, Jesus is all through Genesis through Malachi. Someone described the Bible as a three-part play. Act one is uh, the Old Testament, and it's someone is coming. Act two is the gospel, someone is here. Act three is acts through revelation, someone is coming back. So the Old Testament. So I'm not teaching anything that doesn't know that Christ would suffer, and he would be the first to rise from the dead. And uh, Melanie, you asked about Passover, and when we were talking about it Saturday night, uh, the original Pentecost was the harvest of the first fruits right the first grains that came in well jesus is our firstborn of new creation right he was the first one to rise from the dead and that's why we celebrate passover 50 days after resurrection sunday not 50 days from uh any feast or whatever to rise from the dead and proclaim light to the jewish people and the gentiles 
Uh, I refer to that light, John said, and John 1, 4 said, in him was light, and that light was the light of men. And if you remember when Jesus opened the scroll in, in Luke's gospel, and he read from Isaiah, they gave him the scroll, and he opened the thing, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So he said, my, this is my testimony. It's been through the Old Testament that the Messiah is coming and he's going to lead all men through the, the uh, life of uh, Jesus into salvation. Any questions or comments on that before we go on? You guys are good students. <laughs> all right, I'm back to you, Monica. Okay. Acts 26, 24 through 28. Now, as he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. But he <laughs> said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before whom I also speak freely knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. Yeah, this is a powerful passage here. So here again, here's the Roman, R. Roman is not understanding this in a sense because he's talking about the Old Testament stuff. And he finally says, you're mad. You've gone insane. I think I put in your notes. Again, at the day of Pentecost, all these people heard them from all over the world, heard them speaking in their mother tongue, glorifying the marvelous works of God, right? And it said they were amazed and in awe, but some said they're drunk, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is the thing about supposing we know something, supposing they must be drunk, supposing he must be insane. He, but again, Paul says, I'm not mad, most noble Felix, uh, but speak the words of truth and reason. Uh, for the king before whom I speak knows these things. Again, he's going back to Agrippa. You know these things, Agrippa. You know the law. You know these things. Uh, for I'm convinced that these things do not escape your attention. And, and this is a very important scripture to me since this was not done in a corner, you know. Jesus didn't happen in a corner. Again, I shared when, uh, when the uh, Magi came to Jerusalem and they told Agrippa's grandfather, right? He said, where will the, he, you know, that they came to pay homage to the, the him who's born the king of the Jews. Herod asked where he was born. And the scribes and Pharisees said, in Bethlehem, right? Well, Herod never sent anyone to Bethlehem. If you remember, how, how far is Bethlehem from Jerusalem? How far would this have been to go check out? Five or six miles. Bethlehem is five or six miles from Jerusalem. A guy on a horse could have made it in an hour. Yep. You know, walking and made an hour and a half, you know, but he never checked it out. This thing wasn't done in the corner. J Jesus's ministry went all over. When he came to Jerusalem, the whole town was in an uproar, right? Uh when he was crucified and died, and then his body was not there, then the whole town became in an uproar. So the, uh, the Sanhedrin are trying to pay, the, they pay the guards to lie and say he was taken away. If we're in, and I can't remember which gospel, and they were dead, raised from the dead and walking to the city. None of these things happened in secret, okay? So you, you'd have to be, well, you don't have to be an idiot. You have to be hard-hearted not to see. That's the problem. And this is the problem with the unbelieving Jewish people. You know, he came to his own and his own received him not. They were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for the words of Malachi. Behold, I send, you know, the one preparing the way. He's coming, you know. They're the, what they're still trying to be looking for, the Messiah. And he came in their midst <laughs> and their hearts were too hard to see him. They supposed they supposed you could never heal a guy on the Sabbath. Remember, he healed a guy's withered hand on the Sabbath. So they went outside and figured out how to kill him. You know, 
And so none of this stuff is done in a corner. And, and this is true for the world today. I mean, we Romans, Paul writes in the next book, we are without excuse. Everything in nature cries out the glory of God and the creativity of God. You think the universe just happened? You think it's all held in the rules and the laws of the universe just happened by happenstance? No, it didn't happen. So everything says there's an order and there's an and if the, and there's a beginning and there's an order and if there's a beginning there's a beginner and an orderer and that is God. And so I love this. He says you you believe in the prophets, don't you? <laughs> you you know you know that the Messiah is said to come and Agrippa says to Paul, man, you're almost persuading me to be a Christian. So close, right? So so close. Remember the seed thrown, the sower goes out, some falls on the hard ground and the birds eat it up. And Jesus tells them later that Satan taking away, some fall, falls in the uh, rocky ground, springs up, but then uh, doesn't take root and die. Some falls among the thorns and the thorns choke it off, but others fall on the good thing. So here's the testimony of Paul. He gets to speak before a king. And give him this. Also, his sisters there, remember. Also, all the Jewish people are there, and also the Roman people are there. And he gets this chance to share the gospel. I remember years ago when I first got saved, uh, Billy Graham got an opportunity to go to Moscow. This was back when we were still in the Cold War, pretty much. And uh, he got to speak at a big church in Moscow. And I remember the, the, the news saying, well, what the Russian, what the Soviets did is they didn't let the churchgoers go to hear the message. They put all these political people in there to hear the message. And they were trying to say, see, it was a kind of a waste of time because the church people didn't get to hear them. Then I read the Christian take on that and said, the church people already probably knew the gospel, right? So who better than all these government officials and Soviet bigwigs to come in and hear the gospel for the first time? See, see, God's not mocked, is he? What the world thinks, they suppose, oh, the, you, know, the, you know, the Soviets ruined it for the Christians. No, God uses an opportunity to speak to the, the, the Soviet leadership that all got to go hear Billy Graham. So you almost persuade me. And who read last? I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't read that one. Do what? I didn't read that one. Okay, you want to read this one? Okay, fine. I like to read. Okay. Acts 26, 29 through 32. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether, such as I am, except for these chains. When he had said these things, the king stood up, as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with them. And when they had gone aside, they talked among themselves, saying, This man is doing nothing deserving of death or chains. Then Agrippa said to Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I wish to God you were... Uh, not only you, but all who hear me today would become Christians. You know, I, I wish that is. I wish you'd be like me in this, except for the chains in my hands. So he says this thing. So uh, the king and his sister, uh, Bernice, stand up, and I guess they walk out, and those sat with them, and they go out, and they begin talking. Again, we've had this cultural interaction between the Jewish and the Hebrew people, I mean, the Hebrew and the Roman people, and they're both agreeing, this man has done nothing deserving of death or even imprisonment. Isn't that interesting? They couldn't prove their case against Jesus, and they were never able to prove their case against Paul. You're never able to prove your case against God, right? Who is God that he can be judged by man? You know, how, how you know, how dare us think that we can do this? Uh, then Agrippa says something. I think this is kind of, again, the world's view. Hey, he, he could have been set free. He might have been set free had he not appealed to Caesar. But God's sending him to Caesar, right? It's not like, well, Paul made the wrong decision or anything. God is sending him to Caesar. And uh, that's where we go next week. Next week, if you can join us, is a really an incredible chapter. I've told you Luke is a historian. I didn't realize Luke had an extensive nautical knowledge. I am blown away in preparing. I've already prepared next week's message. And his 
his knowledge of nautical terms and conditions just kind of blow me away as we as we go next week as they head off to go see Caesar and stuff like that. So any questions or any comments before we uh, stop? This is this is the end of the two chapters. Appreciate it, guys. I was going to say we don't know how many of those people did become Christians. Yeah, maybe you know, from verse twenty nine. You know, we don't know how many people became Christians. We don't know. And maybe not that day. You remember he said that, you know, one sows and other waters and other plants, you know, uh, there are times that God, before we became Christians, probably God sent people in their life to talk to us. And we didn't leave that day saved, but he sowed seeds, didn't he? And eventually yep. we came to the Lord. Now we remember, we, ah, we remember those things. Uh, I was a pagan when my oldest daughter was born, and she had a, a high bilirubin count, which is, uh, I'm not sure if that's white blood cells or whatever, and she had to go under uh, the, the ultraviolet lights and everything, and I was a non-believer, and uh, someone came and told me that these people were praying for her you know, that they, they were pastors of a church and they were praying for it. I, I wasn't mad or anything, you know, and stuff like that. But I remember, okay, God, even back then, even back then you were watching over us. I wasn't obeying you. I wasn't, I was still groping for you, still groping, but you were faithful to us. So yeah, probably some of those people got touched down the road. But th this is an incredible story of the gospel going forth and again, we have two more weeks and it ends up in Rome. He's two years in Rome getting the freedom to share the gospel to anyone that comes across. You know, uh, Jesus said, and we, we looked at uh, chapter one Saturday night, you know, you will be my witnesses to me in Judea, Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. And we actually see it pretty much happen in the book of Acts. You know, it's still going on today. We see the birth of the church. And uh, I shared Saturday night, we were praying before the service, Bruce, your wife was there, and we were talking about the price of gas and the gay pride week and everything. And, and then your wife prayed, Bruce, and mentioned giants. And I really felt like the Lord said, Mark, when you look at those things, you're looking at the giants. You know, my kingdom is moving. My kingdom is moving. And we learn this perspective, right? Thousands of people are getting saved every day. Every day. Thousands of people are getting saved every day. Uh, Clement is with us from Kenya today. You know, he's a believer down there pastoring a church. Thousands of people are getting saved every day. About the price of gas. When they saw the giants, they said, we're like grasshoppers. We can do nothing. Don't, don't, be, don't think of ourselves as grasshoppers. The church can't do anything. He's still moving today in the gospel. And that's the exciting thing, you know, that we get to be a part of it. Any other questions or comments? It's a thrill to be part of it. I'm sorry to be late today. I'm okay. <laughs> we we started off with Melanie and I, and we thought, well, you know, we're two or more together. We're going to go ahead and do this. And then Monica came, and then Clement came. And Clement, I met over uh, uh, WhatsApp. And uh, I said, well, I do this thing at three in the morning where Clement is. So he's. I was going to say, now, are you, are you in Kenya right now? I'm in Kenya. It is it's now four four in the morning. Four in the morning. Four in the morning. Well, welcome. It's so good to have Kenya. you with us today. Thank you. God bless you. It has been a blessing to be in this Bible study, and it is awesome seeing Paul witnessing and sharing the gospel. Amen. And I I thank God because of knowing you and interacting with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for Amen. coming on. See, this is a kingdom. Someone's sitting at four in the morning to join a Bible study. We yeah. Like, oh, six I've done it at six, but not at four. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Clement, would you mind closing us in prayer? Yes, I will do. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we exalt you. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you because you are the king. You are the potent, we declare your answers, your answers still on us, O oh Lord. We surrender our life to you this, this, this evening and this morning, oh my Father. We pray that Jehovah, you continue working in our lives. Forgive our sins, forgive where we have gone astray, O oh Lord. We stand this morning, ask for your grace.
always asking for your strength, O oh Lord. Thank you because of the Bible study. We have seen how Paul uh, went through Paul and came to Rome and testified of your of your goodness and, the, and how he came to save man, O oh Lord. We pray that Jehovah, you give us the anointing even to share your gospel boldly to all people in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because of the pastor. Thank you because of all who have taken this this study oh lord we pray that the jehovah you continue quickening us bless our families bless our churches oh lord in the name of jesus christ as we depart oh lord let the holy spirit with us oh lord we thank you and we honor as we meet next time oh lord we pray that jehovah you give us the spirit of revelation that we may embrace your people and, and your people oh lord we bless you we pray for the peace of the world we pray that the jehovah you give you kick on our feet you keep as we prepare for your second of coming oh lord we pray that jehovah you, you prepare servants so we go everywhere to preach your gospel, oh Lord. We thank you and we honor you. For in Jesus' name I pray. It. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. God bless everybody. God bless Amen. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 So, Clement, you still there? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Pleasure to see your face. I'm happy to see you too. It has been wonderful and, and a blessing. Okay. I'm happy to, to, to have learned a lot and especially the way you have broken the, 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 the verses and, and, and explained them. I've um, gotten something. I have seen a different thing from what I used to, to see. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, kind of a college credited course that teaching okay and so yes. and we, we try and go very much in detail and it's been real good because we're trying to equip the saints for the work of the ministry got to know uh, i don't know who's coming so you, you've got to know who's uh, you know people got to know the word so i'm doing this two more weeks and then we break in the summer but I don't know, maybe uh, since you're available to Zoom, are you home? Are you in your home or are you at an internet cafe? Or? I, I'm, I'm in my no, home. me, I, I'm, at, I'm at home. Hey, Linda, I'm sorry, we're over. It, it stopped. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I hear, yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. You, you got it. You probably I'm being. Okay. Well, it'll it'll be recorded. I'm gonna put it on Facebook, and I'll see you next Monday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's that, yeah. That's fine. I don't I don't know what's happening. So. Okay. No problem. Thanks. And so uh, maybe we can do some more Skype together uh, at a better hour for you. Okay. Since you're from your home. And I see that. Let's see. It's seven. So you're eight hours ahead. I I have a son lives in in Andola, Zambia. Oh, Andola, Zambia. Oh, Andola, Zambia is uh, is across our sea, a bit. There's um, a, a few miles from us. Oh yes, very far. Other side, Africa is a very big continent. Most people don't realize how big Africa is. You know, we, you know, yeah. it is a very big continent. But he's been working there now for nine years. They are missionaries and they work with uh, youth to try and train youth pastors and uh, working with children. Oh, that's 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 powerful. That's powerful because we have a lot happening with the, the, the youth and the, the 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 teens. Yes, it's a lot of there's a lot of influence from drugs from the the media. So it's it's, it's very important and preparing for the, them for for the way of the Lord. Yes. Yes. In many years ago, I was in Kenya. I think it was 1980. <laughs> for, 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 for the gospel? No, I actually, uh, I was working back then in Saudi Arabia, and my parents were in Mozambique. And I went to Kenya to go to uh, Mozambique. So it was just a transit. I spent a night there, so... 
no, no, I can see it's not an a coincidence. I see God, God set your foot here and we have, we have connected. There is a divine, a divine connection for it. Yeah. Now you will come for, for, for the gospel now. Now you will come for the gospel. Okay. So are, do you have a family? Are you married? You have children? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. I, have, I have a family. I have a family of, uh, of three children. Okay. And one has woken up. Already one has woken up, has had us, and uh, she's around. Okay. Uh, we have five children. They're grown now. And, uh, oh, look at you. How sweet. How sweet you are. Hey, sweetie. Good morning. You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. <laughs> Well, let me, I have to go now. I have a meeting I have to go to and, uh, but let, let's try and zoom. I'll, I'll be in touch with you and maybe we can zoom again. And, and again, I'll try and be more faithful on WhatsApp to stay in touch with you. Okay. Pray for your ministry. You appreciate your prayers. Amen. Amen. And well, love everyone. Thank you for, 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 for sharing and uh, having us at heart, continue working with us as we grow and reach many. Okay. Okay, my brother, then God bless, okay? Amen. God bless you. Enjoy your, uh, the rest of the day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.